I am a workaholic. Hello, my name is John and I'm a workaholic. For those of you who are familiar with the Enneagram, I am a type three, which means that one of my main motivations in life is to achieve to succeed and to accomplish goals. And obviously one of the main places that plays itself out is in my work. But I also don't think that I and my personality type are all that unique when it comes to obsessing and even finding our identity in our work. Let's face it, we as 21st century humans, and especially Americans, we're all workaholics. In fact, recent studies show that 37% of Americans take less than seven days of vacation per year. And even those that do take extended vacations often stay connected to their work via email at least once a day. And believe me, I am not here to villainize work. I'm not saying you shouldn't work. Work is actually good. Work is and was a mandate from God from the beginning. A.J. Swoboda, in his book, Subversive Sabbath, says that work is not the problem. It is our replacing God with work that is the problem. The idolization of work, whether it's in our career or in school, is almost the default setting for our fast-paced, performance-based world. Luckily, though, we are not the first people in history to tie our work so closely with our identity. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, Moses is giving a speech to the Israelites, and he rehashes the Ten Commandments that we originally read in Exodus chapter 20. Now, all Ten Commandments that we read here from Moses are the same as those in Exodus. But what's really interesting to notice is the subtle differences in the language that Moses uses, specifically when he's talking about the fourth commandment in verse 15. After he talks about the rhythm of Sabbath, that work six days, rest one day rhythm, he says this, Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. This little reminder of Israel's past in Egypt does not appear in the Exodus version of the Ten Commandments. And so the question is, why does Moses feel the need to bring it up now? Well, part of the evil of slavery is that it does not treat people as human. It treats them as property. It treats people as a tool for production. As a slave, your identity essentially was, you are what you make. However, in Deuteronomy, the Israelites are no longer slaves, are they? They have been freed from their bondage and adopted as God's chosen, loved people. And so here in Deuteronomy, the command to take a Sabbath is given as a reminder that you are no longer defined by what you produce. The Sabbath was and is so necessary to human nature because the Sabbath is a reminder that you are not defined by what you make, you are defined by who made you. Now, I wanna be very careful here to not belittle the evils of slavery by drawing a hasty comparison. For the Israelites and for so many others throughout history, they were enslaved against their will. But for us, many of us have made choices that have led to us feeling enslaved by our work. Many of us feel caught in this paradigm that my only value comes from what I can produce. My only value comes from how I perform at my job or at school. And if that's where you're at, then maybe like me, you need a weekly reminder through the Sabbath that you are not defined by what you make, but you are defined by who made you. And let's be clear, for many of us, the work that we do, it's actually good work. It's work that God uses to bring goodness and beauty into the world. However, that doesn't mean that we still don't need to rest from that work in order to give us perspective. Again, I quote Svoboda when I say, Sabbath is God's eternal way of helping us to worship our good God and not worship the good work he has given us to do. Weekly Sabbath is a reminder of who you are. 
It's a weekly opportunity to switch out the labels that we so often get caught putting on ourselves. To switch out slave for son or daughter. To switch out machine for beloved. And so on your day of rest this week, my prayer is that you would remember who you are and that you would remember who made you. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I wanted to let you know that this video is brought to you by my good friends at Inspiration Ranch. The ranch is a nonprofit out of Houston, Texas that provides equine therapeutic riding to children and adults with physical, emotional, and social special needs. I am running a thousand miles this year to raise money for the ranch. My goal is to raise $3,000, which would sponsor one student and their lessons for an entire year. And so I would be so grateful if you would take a minute and visit the link in the description down below and please consider giving to this cause, helping me, helping the ranch, help some of the most wonderful and vulnerable families in the Houston area. That is all I have for you today. Thank you again for watching. I love you all. Keep being awesome.